Hey babes, Jess here, and today we are taking on my top six myths and misconceptions about craft chocolate, mainly because when I talk to a lot of people, there are a lot out there still. Less about how the chocolate is made, I feel like there's more content on that, and it's been moving more towards affordability and transparency. And so today I'm gonna to talk about the ones that I hear the most. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions, because clearly there are so many to work through. Let's get started. Myth number one, craft chocolate is so expensive because the makers are trying to screw everybody over. Oh boy, craft chocolate is more expensive than a Hershey bar for two simple reasons. Craft chocolate makers don't encourage child labor and they don't buy at scale. There's more to the story than that, but as of filming this right now, Hershey's can only account for about 50% of where their chocolate comes from and has not removed child labor from their process entirely. They're hoping to get it out, I believe, in 2023, but you get the point. There are cheaper child and slave labor free chocolates out there, such as Tony's or Theo, so there are cheaper options, but craft chocolate makers in general work at really small scale without child labor, and, and so everything gets to be more expensive. Myth number two that when it comes to craft chocolate, a bar is a serving. No! Okay. For one, do you know how expensive that would be? I have a budget. <laughs> also, craft chocolate is reasonably high in fiber. It varies depending on what percentage cacao you're getting, but it can be as high as like three to four grams of fiber per serving. Also, these are really intense bars, so you just don't want to eat much. Like I had a white chocolate the other day that was really good, fantastic. I ate a square this big. Being honest, the most craft chocolate I've ever eaten in a day is about half a bar in total. More likely you're gonna eat an eighth to a quarter of a bar in a day. So something like 20 grams, it's really small. Some people eat more, some people eat less. Sometimes I don't eat craft chocolate at all for a while. Sometimes I go on a spree and eat half a bar in a day. It really varies. Myth number three, it's too expensive for you to get started. Okay, first to be totally fair, or in a pandemic as I'm filming this, and you may not have the budget for it, period, and that is completely acceptable. This is literally a luxury good by economics definition. You do not need it to survive, it just is a wonderful thing that is better for the environment and has less child labor than mainstream chocolate. And it tastes really good, but it's totally reasonable to not feel comfortable paying for it right now. On the flip side from that, I usually recommend that a beginner has a budget of 10 to $40, not including shipping because pandemic, for getting started in craft chocolate. And there are a lot of ways to save money on chocolate. I've done an older video on that that I'd like to update, but there are things from loyalty points to being on the mailing list for sales. And normally I would recommend going into a chocolate store so you could try things for free, but we don't have that option right now in a pandemic. So there are ways to at least save money if not get things for free. And also a lot of craft chocolate makers right now are doing giveaways, so get on those. Myth number four, I'm not a chocolate person. Now here's the thing, whenever I hear this particular statement, I usually ask for more information and get something to the effect of, it's too sweet for me. Okay, we need to talk about this. So there's a real possibility if you've answered like that, that you've never had actual chocolate before. Yeah, let me back that up a bit. So as an example, a Hershey's Special Dark Bar contains 45% cacao solids. In contrast, within Kraft Chocolate, dark chocolate doesn't even start until 70%. So it kind of looks like this. And on top of that, I found out that the FDA allows milk chocolate to be as low as 10% cacao solids. The white chocolate I eat has more cacao in it than some of these bars. That, that's honestly so freaking weird to me. So yeah, if you're thinking that it's too sweet, it's too light, it's too one note, you really do need to try some craft chocolate just to see what you think because it's gonna taste way different than what you're expecting. Myth number five, it's too dark or bitter for me. All right, we're on the opposite end of the spectrum now. And for this one, if you met me in person, I would ask you if you know how to taste craft chocolate. Y yeah, that sounds really snooty, but the truth of the matter is that craft chocolate makers are making these bars on the assumption that you at least know what tasting craft chocolate is like. They're expecting you to eat it a certain way, namely where you let it melt on the tongue, at least sometimes, 
and <laughs> experience the bars in that way. And so if you eat a chocolate bar that's like 70% dark really fast and chew it like a Hershey bar, it could taste really gross. Like the first time I got a 100% bar, no one told me that there's a little bit of technique for 100% versus everything else. And it was disgusting. Oh my goodness, I hated it. I, duh. I stayed away from 100% for years. It basically took a lot of people telling me how to eat hundreds and how to experience hundreds for me to start enjoying them. And, and now I eat them on occasion and they're pretty fun. So if you're interested in learning how to taste craft chocolate, I'll leave some links up above and down below. I'll also include Barbie Van Horn of Finding Fine Chocolates notes on how to taste 100% bars, cause they're a little special. You don't need to do it every single time. In fact, I snack on chocolate all the time. It's that once you know what you're supposed to be looking for, it makes things way more fun. And then you can snack. Number six, my personal frustration. Like, brr. Real chocolate is 70% or above. So I think this partially comes from two things. And one is that I think people think of craft chocolate as this exclusive club. Something like, why well, you just must try this confection, Georgina. It is delightfully pleasant on the tongue with notes of ambergris and And oh my goodness, you must try this bar. Quite. Yeah, when the reality is more like this. You should totally try this. It makes great for taste like cheese because you need to try this bar like yesterday. It's good. Boy, do I. On the other hand, there are really some people who treat 70% and above as the end all and be all of chocolate, when it's like, no, there's so much to chocolate. You might be someone who really likes fruity notes or tobacco notes, that's totally a thing. Or you might really want it to taste really spicy or you might only like white chocolate or you might only like milk chocolate. There's no wrong way to enjoy chocolate, there's, there's just, chocolate. So buy whatever chocolate you want to buy, though probably please avoid some Hershey's. That child labor thing is really creepy. And just learn about chocolate that you enjoy. Like I got started on craft chocolate with white chocolate. So those are my top six myths and misconceptions, and that is hard to say, on craft chocolate. I'd love to hear from you if you have any other myths or things you've heard that maybe got you stuck on chocolate for a while. We should all discuss these because Transparency is the key to good chocolate. Yeah, I went there. And with that, I will catch you next time. Later!